The following program is rated PG-16 and may contain material that parents find unsuitable for younger viewers. So parents, watch it first, but be warned, you might get hooked. Goa of Winnie Freddy Goa Network, and this is my Shots in Shorts. Well, um, growing up was actually, when I say, I wouldn't call it a normal childhood. I always say that I, I quite grew up as a lonely child. I didn't have much friends around me, and writing became my companion as a very little kid. I would write and draw, write, um, you know, storybooks and all that. I wrote my first storybook when I was in, I think, primary two, that young. I would write, draw, then, you know, keep it all stacked up, and I wouldn't want my, my parents to even see what I was doing. But, after that, I, after primary school, I went to secondary school and in secondary school, I, I wrote novels and I would always give it out as gifts. So writing became like part of my thing. It was a kind of getaway for me. Um, people would always say that I would either write what I want to say than say it out. I think so. And that was me during high school and moving over to my university days. I started doing most of church dramas and you know stage plays and all that. I would always love to write and you know direct and organize everything. Until I attended the workshop, a film workshop by the late Amaki Gray, and then I learned some film making techniques and all that. And that was when I discovered my love for filmmaking. And from then on, I think that was actually the first time I shot a short film. Yeah, the name was Seven Days Without Real and it never saw the light of the day. When I was done shooting, it was so bad that I threw it at home and I never showed it anywhere, not on YouTube, not to anybody, it was that bad. But then after that, and then the second one, which was Twist, it's more of, you know, you do, the, you, you try at first, you fail, then the second you learn from what you just did and what not to do again and I, I guess I've been learning and I, after the second short film which also wasn't really that great but then I kind of put it out on YouTube and it got quite you know good number of reviews from then this, the third one was better and the fourth one was what actually brought me out into the industry and got quite recognized the way I am right now the way I'm starting up um, for that, I think that is it. And hey, I have a sister, a brother, then just a mother, single and raised just by my mom. And they've been very supportive of me, like totally supportive. Uh, other hobbies apart from writing, swimming, dancing, Hey, I was a model before. Yeah, I used to model. I was a three-time queen in River State, um, Miss Biosa Peace Day, Miss Independence, and uh, runner of Miss Ecowas. So I, I was modeling quite. When, when I was growing up, I was a model. Uh, but I wouldn't really call it a hobby because the interest wasn't there anymore, and I just left modeling. So swimming, modeling, dancing, I'm a very bad singer, although I love to sing. And I think that's it. Twenty, twenty eleven, twenty twelve. Because I shot December, then I I I finished editing twenty twelve January. I remember that very well. Before I go into major likes and dislikes, I I don't know if you know that, but. I started out acting. I got like a few roles in some soap operas and all that. One Love, um, Heart, The Hearts or something. 
But then I fell totally in love with being behind the scene more than being in front of the camera. Then I just said, ah, nah, acting is not my thing. Although I can act though, but I rather be behind the scene than in front of the cameras when it comes to you know the acting world. Then my major dislikes would be I, I dislike this honesty. Um, I dislike really um, uh, that's the thing I really have very few things that I dislike. So basically dishonesty as well I dislike. I, I can actually in a way, I'm very tolerant of people. I believe that you just be yourself. And if it's something I can take, then I can take it. The only thing I, I know that I find it hard to take are people who tell, like serious liars. If you're a chronic liar, then you have a problem. But if you're not, I can take any other thing else that any other person can bring their, my way or their way. And then major likes would just be um, happy people, uh, very honest people and really generally I really love anybody that is totally themselves like I don't have to it doesn't have to be the same way I, I would accept things or the same way I work work out my things but people I work with I, I like people to be very opinionated I, I, I love people that have strong opinions if you can stand on your own and be your own person then yeah that's like my total like I accept and I love and I love anybody that is their own person. Um, directors I look up to in outside of Hollywood, I if I say James Cameron, that would be like almost everything for every director I know that. I mean, the guy is he's a legend, you know. If I love him because he goes extreme, like he could do anything just to get what he wants. And I know, yeah, like the downsides to it, but that is one of the reasons why I totally love him. And he, if he wants to get something right, he could spend like months, you know, just meditating and, you know, trying to figure out how to get that right. I, th I think the whole dedication just stands him out. And that's why, you know, till now, if you mention James Cameron anywhere, everybody would respect that guy. And then another director whom I just fell in love with is James Wan, director of Fast and Furious 7 and also director of Saw. I, I, I love him or I look up to him because I, I love people that think out of the ordinary and for you to sit down and think of something that hasn't been done and you go like, yes, I want to do this. And you do anything and everything possible to get that done. I mean, that is something that I respect so much and that is why I'm literally obsessed with James Wan, like right now. Coming down to Nollywood, I love Emmy Song. Uh, she, she hasn't really done so much when it comes to directing, but the very few that she has done, I feel, first of all, I think she's like a very great actress. So being able to invite that into directing and all that, I think she's actually a very strong person when it comes to all around, whether she's producing or directing or acting. I totally have respect for her and I look up to her when it comes to, you know, Nollywood. And finally, the legend when it comes to Nollywood, Mr. Kunle Afo Lion. I mean, he's, he's epic in his own way. It still boils down to what I say. When you, when you cook up something in your mind that it's kind of hard to pull up when it comes to Nollywood. But I think most times what we just go with in Nollywood is the easy way out or if you can get so so actress and so so actor in one house or one room, you know, just act your thing and you know, that's it, sell your movie and make your money. But when you when you go into that stress of um, I want to pull this together, I want to do this, I want to do something out of the ordinary, something that Nollywood hasn't seen before, that is totally something that I respect and I look up to and that it will, that is exactly what Mr. Kunleya Folayan is all about. So yeah, he is definitely one of the people I look up to in Nollywood. All right, and coming up next is um, something about rape, something that I, I put together. This is my movie and it's titled Blur. <laughs>
hey, what happened Saturday night? I heard you ditched the guys. <laughs> Just like that. I mean, just like that. We're all together. Next thing, this chick disappeared. On one phone call she was receiving. Me and my brother. Thanks to Ralph. Thanks to Ralph that said we should just leave that day. We'll probably still be waiting for her now. What happened to your face? Oh. I'm so sorry we left you that day. It was, it was, it was rough that said we should go after we waited so long for you. I'm so sorry. Jen, are you okay? She doesn't look okay. Hey, come on. I, I, I kept this front seat just for you. Uh-uh. Where's Ken? Oh, Ken. Um, uh, he couldn't make it. He said he had something to take care of. Um, really? Yeah. So Ken is actually going to miss Mike's promotional party. And please, let's just leave here, please. Uh. What's wrong with this guy now? Come on, let's just go. Come on, come on, come on. It has been two days, two days since that dreadful night. I don't know how I've survived. I feel nothing in me. Nothing. Just this large, empty hole of nothingness. What is this can say? This one had to be passing. So what happens now? That your best weekend is not here. Doesn't look like you have a good time either. <laughs> well, I sure am. What? Do you plan to spoil it? You can't count on it. You know, Rafa, you just have this really devilish look in your eyes. But as usual, I'm just going to keep ignoring you and make sure I have enough fun today. Ah. How many? Um, eight, I think. Oh. Come on, it's fifteen. Okay, that's enough for distribution today. What's wrong? 
talk to me. I call you, you don't pick. When I'm your party now, what is it? Yes, sir. Hi, Kenny. I'm not saying this is the night of my promotion party. I forgot to thank you for coming. You guys were great. I want to say thank you for, for, for coming, especially with you. <laughs> Get good. Let's meet. Leave her, leave her, leave her alone. What is wrong with you? Are you okay? Come on, Kenny, talk to me. What is happening? What is wrong with you? He raped me. What? You he were raped? When? My ex He followed me. He raped me and then he left me on Kanye. What? I didn't see. Uh, um, Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. <laughs> I was with you Rob. Liar, liar, you killed you. Kenny, Kenny, come on. Come on. Liar, liar, you killed him. Kenny, uh, relax, uh, relax, uh, calm down. I was with Rob all through the night. The only time he stood up was when he insisted we left. Oh. And, and, and that was because you were not coming. Okay, did you see the face of the person that went to you? No, I didn't see his face, but I know he's the one. I know he's the one. You're a psycho. You're a psycho. You were drunk. Nobody saw you again. I don't know what happened to you. You guys did anything that happened to you after you. Oh my god. I know you and Ralph don't really get along. And you guys are not really best of friends, but I could tell you, it wasn't Ralph that raped you. It was him. I know it was him. It was him. It was him. It was him. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I could. Are you okay? story that comes out anywhere I see that on social media I see that anytime someone like tells a story of getting raped which to even start with is the hard part of admitting or you know expressing your views and somehow the society will find a way to blame the girl it's something that it's is so common these days and I think we 
we don't really pay the kind of necessary attention that we pay to rape as much as we should. Like there are a lot of people suffering and sometimes it feels like they'd rather just keep it to themselves than say out what happened and get, then get blamed in the process. And something else I also try to point out in the movie is that most times it's not actually who you think it was. Sometimes it could actually be your close friend and sometimes it could be that person that you never thought in your entire life could be the one responsible. So most of the times it's not, it's not about the girl and where she was and what she was wearing. Most times some people are just deviant in the society and, I, and if we could pay that much attention to rape as much as we should, probably would have like less rape, case, less rape cases in the society. The challenges I faced were, oh, first of all, I tried so hard to incorporate daily life um, routines into the movie because I wanted the audience to feel like they were trapped in the girl's world. And that way, I wanted us to see her walking out from the office, see her on the streets, walking home and feeling lost. So mostly the challenges I faced were, you know, getting that, um, the, the scenario that I wanted, like using the bridge, I used the um, flyover bridge at some point, I used the mirror, and you're trying to shoot in a way that you don't have people gathering and watching, and then it looks like, ah, there's a movie. So you're shooting something and you still want people to act natural, and yeah, it's, it's quite tricky, but you know, we survived. We, we managed and we went through it and, and, and it came out nice. And every, everybody actually did play a role. So at some point we had to go hide the camera somewhere very at a corner so that people passing wouldn't know that there's a camera there and they wouldn't like stare into the camera and you know, look and then spoil the shot. Well, I wouldn't call it harassment in that sense, but you know, when you're using the flyover bridge, you've got security guards there and they're like, ah, madam, you pay us money. And yeah, it kind of, I ended up giving them something, but that was just it. We shot for two days because we needed the, the night scene and then we needed a daylight scene. So we shot for two days. And um, some of the night scenes were actually shot in the afternoon. We kind of had to, you know, figure out a way and blend away because you're shooting all, all through the night and most of your cast needs to sleep. And then they sleep and it's daylight and you still need to shoot a night scene. Somehow you just have to figure out a way to, you know, make it night. So that part where she was with the candle and it was like it was a night scene, it was actually like 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, I wasn't really expecting the kind of feedback I got from Blur because I just thought of the, the theme, the rape thing, and I wanted to shoot something on that. And I did what I wanted to do and threw it, you know, threw it there. And the very first people that saw Blur was like, we want that and we want you to make a series from the same Blur episode. And I was like, okay, chill. The net, because I got like two offers immediately when I showed the first mobile, it was a mobile site and the second was a mobile site. Then I didn't want them to own, um, own Blur, like exclu have exclusive rights to Blur, so I didn't like give it out. Then I also had, um, Blow Air at an international film festival. They saw it and they picked it up in the air and I got great reviews there. And finally, when a TV station saw Blow, they actually watched it and they were like, we want you to do something on the same note. And that was how I did a series from Blow again. But you know, so far, great reviews that I wasn't really expecting. <laughs> You can follow me on Instagram at Winnie Freddy Gua, at Twitter at Winnie Gua, Facebook at Winnie Freddy Gua, and you can visit my website www.winniefreddyguanetwork.com. So 
my advice to all upcoming short film directors out there or movie directors is just be you. In our industry, it's quite easy to get lost in what is on ground already. But think of the kind of person you are and the kind of person you want to bring to the industry and the kind of thing you want to bring to the industry. Like people always say, you're unique and no one else can ever be like you. So whatever idea that you feel like you want to get out there into the world, try and not get carried away by Nollywood. Just do your thing. And with time, you'll get appreciated for what it is that you're doing. My name is Winnie Fred and that was my short film Blur and this has been Shirts in Shirts.